Pelosi's trip to Taiwan appears not to have received much support in the Western media. And as a recent article by the New York Times suggests, the visit may plunge the U.S. into indirect conflict not only with Russia, but now also with China. U.S. officials are a lot more concerned about Ukraine's leadership than they are letting on. This Ukraine war is so not over, so not stable, so not without dangerous surprises that can pop out on any given day. Yet in the middle of all this, we are going to risk a conflict with China over Taiwan, provoked by an arbitrary and frivolous visit by the Speaker of the House? All of this would be terribly funny if it wasn't so serious. This ends up being a diversion from the United States' effort to support the war in Ukraine. What is betrayed by Friedman's article is the utter chaos that is the Biden administration's foreign policy, because they keep sending mixed signals. They say they back the one China policy. They don't recognize independence for Taiwan. Yet Pelosi's arrival and all of the other messaging that's going along it suggests that. So this conflict in Washington, where Washington doesn't really know what it's doing anymore. It can't decide if it's supporting Ukraine fully or if it, in the back of their mind, wants to support independence for Taiwan, but they don't want to get into a conflict with China. It is, it, it is a confused, hot mess. Earlier, my colleague Union O'Neill discussed the situation with Alfred Desaius, a professor of international law, and Angela Giolania, a political and financial analyst. We Americans love annoying other people. We are poking our fingers into their eyes, and that shows that we are number one. And we don't even realize uh, that we are cynics. Uh, we do this because it makes us feel good. It's part of the information war, and it's part of uh, xenophobia. It is feeding into the fear uh, of the Chinese, as we have been led to fear Russia and to fear uh, Belarusia, etc. So by definition, we are the good guys and we're fighting uh, the good war. I don't think that Taiwanese are buying it and the rest of the world is not buying it. Latin America is not buying it. Neither is India and, of course, uh, not uh, Russia or Belarusia and many other countries in Europe. With China apparently now carrying out military maneuvers in the area, is this historically, recently at least, the closest we've come to a major incident between the two powers. Yes, absolutely. But keep in mind, this is a show of force. China needs to do something. China uh, doesn't want to lose face. He, if uh, uh, Nancy Pelosi goes to Taiwan, something needs to happen. If the, if the U.S. is thinking that China bluff, it's making a huge mistake. The international community would not point directly a finger at the U.S. and say that ultimately, if there is a, a response, the responsibility would come from China. So uh, it's... Uh, it's just, uh, it's been all coordinated. This, it's not, uh, it's not a, a private uh, enterprise here of Nancy Pelosi. What they want to do in Asia is to fight China to the last Taiwanese. They will have other countries fighting the wars on behalf of the US. One could also ask, just as Alfred alluded to there, how helpful this is for the Taiwanese themselves. Is there an argument to be made that they could be left in a much more tense environment than before, despite what Pelosi is trying to achieve or says she wants to do. Keep in mind that Taiwan is actually de facto economically integrated with China. So you have a de facto integration. It is going against Taiwan's interest. 